Well, it it tells us we can be better. Mm. You know, that we can reach great heights if we try. That we can succeed in, in conquering the impossible. Because make no mistake, space is hard. <laughs> it, it, it can kill you in an instant. It is not an easy thing to get through, to, to break through gravity. So it is hard. But that's one of the reasons why we love it so much. And because... We have in us the need to try to do something hard and to try to be better. And, and I think space encapsulates that feeling of being the best we can be. Well, hello, dear listener, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Endless Coffee Cup podcast. And today I have a fascinating guest. I am very excited about this. It, it, I, I am going to introduce to you Izzy House. Actually, I'm going to let Izzy, if you could just take a few minutes and introduce yourself, because I, I'm excited to have you here. But I think from your mouth, I think this would be a fantastic introduction. Well, thank you for having me. And who am I? I am a, pr- a professed space nerd. I love space. I always have loved space. Ever since I was 13 years old and was introduced with my grandparents, they lived near Cape Canaveral at the time. Mm. But, you know, as a good, good little girl, you know, you get grounded, you pick careers that are not crazy out of this world and I did I chose marketing and I loved marketing I was in marketing working with small businesses since 1990s it was truly a happy place and then my son got too close he he started to get close to graduation and I started thinking what does chapter three look like for me and then I went back to school because during the smartphone revolution, everything changed. Marketing changed drastically. Right. And it was turned on its head. I went back to school to get up on all of the new techniques and strategies and, and whatnot. And during this time, I went back to Cape Canaveral. And then I realized I could combine both my passions and never look back. Very and I cool. wrote a book. And it is called Space Marketing, Competing in the New Space, the New Commercial Space Industry. And I am having a blast. And I meant that pun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is obvious. I mean, just from the, the conversation that we've had already, it, you are so excited about this. And I felt like when just when we were talking, I'm getting excited. It's just infectious the way that you talk about what's happening and 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 this you know this new frontier of space and the commercialization of space and of course if it's being commercialized if it's being utilized it's got to be marketed and so yeah you mentioned you you wrote the book space marketing and also started a podcast space marketing. But I had to get you, and just, dear listener, just a little bit of context. I met Izzy through the Marketing Podcast Network, which you hear the promos for that every once in a while, and Izzy joined us just a few weeks ago. And so it was very quickly, I got in touch and said, you've got to be on the podcast. I want to know more about what you're doing. So let me just start with an obvious question, Izzy. How do you market space? And just for the listener, we're not talking about like small spaces or <laughs> storage spaces. We're talking about outer space. And that I, I so maybe that was obvious, but <laughs> how do you market space? Well, the premise for the book was it, it started way back when I started working with small businesses very early in my career. I was in an environmental technology incubator. I was surrounded by geniuses that they figured that with their inventions, the world would come to them, that they did not need marketing. Mm -hmm. And I watched a lot of very incredible inventions that could benefit our our world sit and die on a shelf because nobody, nobody can buy your product nobody can buy your idea nobody can do anything for you if they don't know you exist right 
and marketing makes you exist. Well, come back into the space industry and commercialization is relatively new. About 2015, the Space Act came in and that really made the commercialization explode. A lot of these people that have been in the space industry for a long time, they're geniuses, just <laughs> like that incubator. Those t same type of people that just their minds are incredible, but they haven't had to market. Mm. And it has been a very grant-based industry for such a long time that having competition and having to market is kind of uncharted waters. So I wrote the book to talk to them and to kind of introduce them to the principles, the tactics, and the, the strategies of marketing. It is basically just good marketing. It's building relationships. It's what is branding. It's the basics. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's good for any business, not just space business, but it's written through the lens of space so that they can see how it applies to them. And I took a a fake company, Rockets R Us, and if there's <laughs> one out there that exists, I don't know you exist. <laughs> and then I applied all the strategies and tactics that I was talking about to that company so they could see how it works. Mm. Not just say, oh, you need to do this. You know, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. So you know, I have a, a very soft spot for education. Education it is just... I think is the most important thing I can give. Mm -hmm. And that's what I give in this book. Wow. That is great. I mean, you, you just dropped a couple of statistics when we were talking about it, in over 70 countries right now are involved in space in some form or another. You know, I, I, the listeners know I do a lot of work with the United Arab Emirates and, and they sent a, probe to Mars. And it's interesting because the, the whole country celebrates that. that. That is such an achievement. And yet it's other countries are jumping on board as well. So it's it's interplanetary exploration. It's moving on. And I think you were talking about just the number of space stations that are yes. coming online. I had no clue about any of that. Well, it's Space is very exciting, and a lot of countries are starting space programs, including Africa and countries you wouldn't, Ecuador, all these other countries that you don't think of when you think of space. India. Mm -hmm. India mm -hmm. has gone bonkers in space, <laughs> and they are taking a hold, and in, in, in they're really, really improving on their space. The lower Earth orbit has grown immensely. You, the I went to the Space Transportation Conference this last spring, and they have 107,000 satellites planned to go up planned just go this up. year. Wow. Just this year. And there, a lot of them are small satellites. I mean, we're not talking about bus size satellites here. <laughs> but we do have a few that are very important. There are four going up that are going to be adding to the measurements of our global environment. They're going to be doing additional measurements. We have several satellites up in orbit that are looking at our Earth and seeing how healthy we are, seeing the damage that we've done. And it's through the eyes in space that we're able to see the damage and correct it. Mm. For example, the hole in the ozone. You know, we heard about the hole in the ozone back many years ago. And because we were able to see it from space, mm. we were able to change legislation. And now that those, those holes, we have two of them, those holes are healing. Wow. Because wow. we saw them. If we did not have eyes in space, we would not have known. So there's four major ones going up to help us see more of what the Earth is doing as far as health. Those are important. The space stations, those are exciting. NASA has just signed three agreements for new space stations that are going to be going up, I believe it's 2024 to 2027, roughly. And then they are going to give a fourth, they have a fourth one that is taking over the space station. It's Axiom, and they're going to be commercializing the space station 
and as soon as they decommission the space station, it is going to be a, its own free flyer. <laughs> so a free flyer is just, it's a space station that's on its own. Oh. That's just NASA. Now, we have another one that is going to be doing a movie with Tom Cruise up there. And it is also set to launch 2024, 25, 20 <laughs> to 27, somewhere around there. And it's going to have all kinds of sports themes to it, as well as the entertainment. And there's another one that is scheduled <laughs> to go up about the same time that is going to be geared towards hotels. It's wow. going to be a space hotel, space tourism. You know, a lot of people say, well, it's the playground to the rich. Mm-hmm. But you could actually say that about aviation when it first started, too. True. Commercial yeah. aviation. Yeah. You know, they would give caviar to the people that were on the flight <laughs> and really extravagant meals. And it is those beginning, those people that are paying our way for one day will all be able to do that without even thinking about it. The one of the most exciting things that is getting ready to happen is subsonic sub, suborbital flight. It is a plane that is going to ride the orbit, the lower Earth orbit, which will enable it to go about fourteen or seventeen thousand five hundred miles per hour. Wow! And it will be able to travel anywhere in the world in less than two hours. That's amazing. That that I mean this this is the type I. I I'm not reading about this technology anywhere, it, you know, as what's going on and all that. So it's it's just so fascinating to hear that yes, there is innovation. There there are things being developed, and and that's that's exciting because I do a lot of travel. So that <laughs> that, that I hope to see that in 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 my lifetime that we'll be able to experience that. But it's just in the fascinating. next couple of years. Really? That's, that's the next couple of years. United has already ordered some. Oh, really? United Airlines. Wow. The, wow. China has developed them. NASA is developing them. We're getting ready to see those come online very quickly. Wow. Which is one of the reasons why I'm so focused on spaceports mm-hmm. is because that is your point-to-point transportation. It's your connection with all these planes. It's also our connection with space. Mm-hmm. So whether or not a space station launches rockets or horizontal takeoffs, which we can talk about, it is still going to be a symbol of space for whatever region, country, state that it's in. And it will be the hub of all the space activity that's going on. That's amazing. So, yeah, you are currently working with the state of Kentucky and in their transportation cabinet, and you are developing or working to develop the spaceport there in Kentucky. Talk a little bit more about what a spaceport is, because I, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking it's horizontal launches. It's, it, you know, but the way you started to explain it is there's a lot more going on than that. I was trying to explain it to my wife the other night. I'm like, you're just going to have to listen to the podcast because I, I don't know <laughs> enough to answer this question. So I'm going to pitch it to you what exactly is a spaceport because you even made the the comment that at least every state is going to need to have a spaceport and yes. and that has, has stuck with me so what is a spaceport it in my opinion and in my vision it is the hub of space for the state mm. there are different kinds of takeoffs most of our spaceports right now when we think of spaceports we think of vertical You know, we Mm -hmm. think of the Falcon 9. We think of the rockets that go up. But there are a lot of spaceports that can't do rockets. It's literally a bomb. (laughs) So we don't want it near people, right? right? So it has to be usually over water. The FAA wants you to keep it safe. And so it has to be over water. And and there's all kinds of criteria to do vertical launch. Hmm. But there are a lot of things coming online that are horizontal launch. For example, Virgin Orbit, they are, I think this month, they are launching a big rocket. It is basically a plane, like a 747, I believe, or some type of plane like that with a rocket on their wing. Oh, wow. It's it's 
on below their wing and they get up to a certain altitude and they shoot off the rocket. Well, you end up with less fuel admitted. So mm. it's kinder. It's a, it's a better launch. You don't have it to have as much power. It can carry small satellites, which, you know, satellites can literally fit in your hand now. And which is incredible. And Kentucky has a college that speci- specialize, specializes in small satellite development, wow. which you wouldn't know about. Right. Because, no, you know, it's just, there's too many kept secrets <laughs> in this particular, <laughs> you know, that it's, it's marketing. Yeah. It needs more marketing. And that is one version of horizontal takeoff. Then you have the suborbital that is going to need places to land and places to take off. But even if you don't do any launches whatsoever, then you still have all this technology all this innovation that needs a place to reside. Mm. It needs a place to focus. So my vision is to have this spaceport in Eastern Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky recently lost the coal industry. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of, there's a huge vacuum right there as far as what is available for the economy. So having space go in there could give inspiration to the the citizens that live there the community it could give money and finance and careers and workforce it can develop all those wonderful things for that end of the state Mm. whether or not they launch that's right. that's a secondary because some of this technology is mind blowing and I know that we talked a little bit about it and I, I want to <laughs> share it again because it's just so mind blowing. Well, it, outside yeah. of Louisville, they have there's a company that is 3D printing hearts. That's amazing, and it beats. <laughs> now, here's the big deal about that is that when you 3D print something. When you're working with the cellular structure of of tissue, it's like printing with water, and Mm. it collapses on itself. But when you do it in space, it doesn't do that. And you're able to 3D print a heart. Now, imagine one day that you, if you need a heart transplant, that you can have a 3D printed heart using your cellular structure which your body will not reject. That's amazing. And it's just amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and it's funny because I remember, I mean, when I was a kid, I was reading a book about space. And one of the things that always stuck with me, because, you know, I'm kind of right up the road from you in Northeast Ohio, where, you know, we had the steel industry. And that's kind of gone away. But in this book, it talked about soon, and, and soon, I think this was like the 80s, it was like there will be manufacturing in space because when the steel cools down because of gravity, it doesn't this the structure, the the atomic structure, or I'm trying to think exactly what it is, the grain is not true because of gravity, it cools unevenly. And yes. heavy particles sink to the bottom. And so because of that, they were saying if you move your steel production facility into space, then because of zero gravity, you have stronger steel. It makes moving it easier as you're producing it. And and I just remember the picture of it, of like this hot part of steel going across space. But there's so much, I mean, to that zero gravity that in a lot of industries, that becomes a very important part of production. Yes. And for example, 3D printing, they didn't see 3D printing coming when they talked about the different changes in the steel and 3d printing is being tested on the iss big time (laughs) as far as with metals in fact in northern kentucky southern ohio they 3d print jet engines (laughs) and it replaces 300 parts and they're able to structure it to where it's stronger it's lighter and they're taking that technology and taking it to space the the proteins and crystals work differently up there. They're mm. bigger and cleaner. 
they're able to do fiber optics up in space cleaner and better than they could do down here. Made in Space is a company that actually is producing that right now. But <laughs> Oh, we'll to look for the technology. label. Yeah, look for the label, Made in Space. I mean, yes. so already, I mean, we've just talked about so many industries just in this short amount of time. Hotels, travel, you know, medical, steel, 3D printing, all the, I mean, how many industries are going to be affected by production or something to do with space over the next few years? Well, I even have a better question for you. Oh, great. How many are affected right now? Oh, <laughs> You're yes. going to have to answer that. I can't. <laughs> well, that, this is this is one of my things is that our space impacts every minute of our day right now. Mm. For example, your cell phone that you hold in your pocket. Mm -hmm. the, it's coming from space. It's coming right. from satellites. Right. Yeah. And, and we know this, but sometimes we forget. Yeah. The GPS is coming from space that tells us where to go, what traffic is doing. The GPS is so fine-tuned now that it can detect an inch movement in soil. So it can predict earthquakes. Wow. And that's coming from space. Wow. Medicine. Did, did you get the COVID vaccine? Well, guess what? That technology was developed on the International Space Station. No, that, that's crazy. Wow. Or if you're a diabetic and you take your blood sugar... That was developed so that they could track the astronauts' blood sugar. Hmm. That was technology developed in space that came down. Sleep on a Tempur-Pedic? <laughs> Memory foam? That was developed for space. Wow. It's something called a spin-off technology. Mm -hmm. So NASA, because they're a government entity, they are able to take the 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 things that they discover, the technology that they develop and give it to the American people and businesses are able to take that technology and make it into products that we live with every day. Wow. So, I mean, food preservation came from the Apollo era with Nestle developing how to package foods to where they wouldn't make you sick. Hmm. So there's a lot of technology just in that application wow. that we we live with ever, all day long, but we just don't realize that connection to space. Very true. Yeah, that's very true. Wow. Yeah, it's absolutely astounding to learn this and, and then, you know, learn what else is coming online. I, I think, you know, honestly, you know, I don't, you know, maybe I'm the average person, but it's like, this is why I guess you are doing what you're doing. You are marketing. You are raising awareness, which is what marketing does include of, you know, just an appreciation of what's going on. But also, I mean, this is going to be a major, major factor. And, in, in, you know, I'm just thinking of just like hiring, you know, hiring people, what kind of experience they have in understanding this space, quote unquote. How are they going to talk about it, present it? But then, you know, then we get into all kinds of supply chain things that's going on as well. This is just an incredible industry that it seems like it's going to be turning everything upside down over the next decade. I mean, is Absolutely. that really, I mean, we, and we're getting ready to go back to the moon. Mm -hmm. And when we go back to the moon, we're going to stay. Mm. They're building, they're going to have a gateway, which is another space station that's going <laughs> up and it's going to be around the moon. And then they're going to build on the moon to, to, have a settlement there. Wow. And wow. so we're going to stay. And then a, a lot of other space stations that are coming online that we don't foresee, you know, there's a lot of things like 3D printing that we, or the, the smartphone that we just, we don't see coming and have impacted our lives in ways that you could not have forecasted. And so there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be happening before the end of the decade that we just don't see coming mm. and are going to change everything mm. because technology is moving fast and we all see this, but space is really moving fast. There's a lot of new things happening all the time. It's just an, an amazing thing. The pharmaceuticals, if they start developing their own space stations, that is going to revolutionize medicine 
in ways that we cannot foresee right now. Mm. And living off planet will change things. I mean, it'll get to the point where it's part of our everyday just, oh, are you going to be taking a flight around the world? Instead <laughs> of doing a cruise around the world, you might do an orbit around the world. <laughs> space space tourism is huge. Right. And they have some stratospheric balloons that go up that you're going to be able to take rides on and see the curvature of the Earth. And when you can see the beauty of our planet, not in a way that you could see any other way, you know, how is that going to affect you? It's going to affect you going forward if you see that. It's called the overview effect. Wow. And you see how fragile our planet is? We'll want to take better care of it. Mm Mm-hmm. So well, I remember them saying the, the first picture that was taken from the moon of the Earth, that there was an effect on the people who saw that image, that for the first time seeing the Earth from a never from the outside perspective and the impact that that made on people in seeing that, that there was definitely a change. And so now for other people to be able for, you know, the more the mass population to actually experience uh, rather than just seeing a photo, that I, I can imagine that would be an amazing experience. Well, and during that time, there was a intelligent man that was running the public affairs program for NASA during that time, which is why we have as much as we have and why we have the idea of space that we have. He was able to market space in such a way that we all felt it. We've all felt like we were a part of it. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even want to film the first step on the moon because they were afraid, well, what if something bad happens? It was a big conversation on, should we even do this? And at the time we were going against Russia, Mm -hmm. of course, why on earth would you give away all these secrets? And They fought and fought and fought and won. Hmm. And how many lives has that first step on the moon changed? I mean, from that moment on, it affects our days today. Mm -hmm. Because we all have an affinity for that moment. Everybody still knows and talks about that moment. Mm -hmm. What if they didn't film it? Right, right. And well, how many companies, like which, what we're talking about today, you, they don't film it. They don't let people know it's even happening. And they're so busy in developing it that they just, marketing has not been on their radar. Yeah, that's amazing because, well, and, and you just look at how it affects the psyche of a people. You know, I wasn't alive, but Kennedy's speech about going to the moon. That, I think, was probably one of the best speeches I've, I've ever heard, especially a presidential speech, that we're going to the moon not because it's easy, but because it's hard or hard. I, I love that, you know, I, from the New England originally. So I love that. But it was just a, a wonderfully impassioned speech about technology. And we're going to do this. And, you know, unfortunately, he didn't live to see what happened. But the, it wasn't a long time before it did happen. And I think people, you know, we haven't been to the moon in how long. We've had numerous space shuttle missions going up, but we haven't been to the moon. And I think maybe that's part of it. We've lost that that national, international wonder of what's happening and what it, it, how the technology is driving this innovation and making life better. When you don't have that, I, I think that, that global vision of what's happening, I think sometimes, you know, I see the comments online and social media like, well, we haven't even been back to the moon. What's, you know, there's, it seems like we've lost that, that drive or that understanding of what's going on. So this, this concept of marketing space, I I think becomes so much more important, not just for the commercialization, but it, 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 I think this is what made Star Trek such a, you know, a, a touchstone in our history is that imagination part of it. Hey everyone, this is Matt, and thanks for listening. Just a quick break in the middle of the podcast here to let you know there's a couple ways that you can connect with us. The first is learn.sitelogic.com. That's the learning site where you can see courses on analytics, 
courses on digital marketing across paid search, SEO, multiple disciplines. And then also, you can connect with us on Slack. Go to Slack if you're there and look for us at endlesscoffeecup.slack.com. Connect with us. I'd love to hear from you. Hear what ails you in the realm of digital marketing. Are there courses you need, information that you'd like to hear, or maybe some past guests that you'd like to hear more from? Thanks again for being a listener of the Endless Coffee Cup, and I look forward to hearing from you. Well, it it tells us we can be better. Mm. You know, that we can reach great heights if we try, that we can succeed in, in conquering the impossible. Because make no mistake, space is hard. <laughs> it, it, it can kill you in an instant. It is not an easy thing to get through, to, to break through gravity. So it is hard. But that's one of the reasons why we love it so much. And because we have in us the need to try to do something hard and to try to be better. And, and I think space encapsulates that feeling of being the best we can be. Mm. And that's one of the things I also love about the spin industry is 99% of the people that I meet, they want to do good for the idea of doing good. They're not in it to you know, fleece customers. They're not in it to, to make a buck. <laughs> a lot of them. Well, that's because we don't have a lot of marketers there yet. <laughs> that's, right. that's part of it. <laughs> and they're they're in it to make things better. Right. And they're in it to do hard things. And mm-hmm. and so it's a it's a very inspiring group of people. Well, I imagine, like you said, it, it's smart people doing things, trying things, and no one's monetizing it, which is you know both good and bad. You know, you know <laughs> I, sooner or later, I think we'll get our shysters up there with with what's going on, but. I, I mean, it's such a, a fascinating subject. And yeah, not only raising awareness, but yeah, sooner or later, some of these industries are going to have to market themselves. And and I, I don't know. I don't know why we don't hear more about how some of these technologies have come about based in research, based in application in the space station and what they're doing. I think we hear all the time that they're doing experiments, but we don't have a clue what those experiments are doing. Or that they relate to what we do every day. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, like if you're a diabetic, checking your sugar. Mm-hmm. You don't think about space when you do that. No. When you make a phone call, when you check traffic, you don't think about space. Mm-hmm. And I think that just needs to be more of the narrative. A lot of narrative right now talks about how the rockets are polluting. And yes, let me tell you. That that is one of the things that is exciting about this industry, too, is because it does not need to be told. Mm. You know what? You're doing something that shouldn't be done, that harms the earth. They do it on their own. They're changing the fuels so that they don't pollute. In fact, there's one company down in Florida called Via that is taking plastic bottles, recycled plastic bottles, and making rocket fuel into the, from those. <laughs> And the exciting thing about that particular company is that their fuel doesn't explode. Wow. So you're going to be able to have rockets in places that you may not have been able to have rockets before. So how it's do, a, yeah, well, a it, tell fuel. me about this. this is, <laughs> if it doesn't explode, what does it do? <laughs> well, the way that they, they have 3D printed mm-hmm. this particular fuel and they have a way that the other fuel goes through it and i'm not an engineer so it's okay is just it's okay You're, we're marketers we we we, <laughs> we can take the glossy version <laughs> so and it's, it's a way that it burns the fuel without a lot of chemicals going into the atmosphere there's still a little bit of carbon but nothing else that's detrimental mm-hmm. and it's using recycled material mm. so it is actually a green rocket fuel well, we have a lot of plastic bottles around this planet, so I think we can scrounge a few to yes. <laughs> to work on that. <laughs> I think one flight takes a million plastic bottles. Wow. So wow. that's a lot of plastic bottles. That is. That the is recycle. Amazing. Yes, really. Absolutely. Wow. That is so now, cool. 
let's just take that particular instance mm-hmm. of that company going to space. What if we told them, no, we have to take care of down here first. We don't want you going to space. What do you think that technology for using plastic bottles as fuel is going to do down here? Mm-hmm. I mean, everything comes back down to earth. Yeah. So as we reach farther, so, uh, uh, you know, let's let the innovation keep coming. Mm. That is an amazing principle. And, and yeah, you outlined so many things already that were developed for the space program and have now filtered into our everyday lives. So absolutely. That is a great, compelling argument for that. And, and it. It also shows that those involved in the program know that this is an issue. And yes. if it's going to continue and we're, I mean, I mean, how many, how many vertical launches are there in a day, in a month that, I mean, that are going on that we just don't know about? Well, it's getting more and more common, which is why we don't hear about it. That's yeah. another thing is- <laughs> The more common it becomes, the less we hear about it. And that was one of the, the problems with the space shuttle program mm. is that you only heard about things when something bad happened. Right. Yes. You, know, you got so used to it that it didn't even make the news. Well, Falcon 9, I think, is going up weekly now wow. or something very close. And do we hear about it? And the reason that a lot of those flights are happening is because of Starlink which you may have heard of when he gave some some Starlink equipment to the Ukraine. Yes. And they were able to connect. Right. Well, imagine just the Starlink program to where everyone in the world is going to be able to communicate. How is that going to change our world? We cannot even fathom some of the changes that we're going to see in the next what, five years just based off of that technology in space. And, you know, there's a lot of people who say, well, you know, some of that's good, some of it's, some of it's bad. You know, there's a lot of arguments on that. But the thing is, what's it going to do? It's going to do good and bad, and it's going to, but I think it's going to do more good mm. than it will do bad. I mean, the Ukraine is able to get their message out to us Mm -hmm. because of this particular piece of equipment. It's going to allow countries that could never afford this. So all of a sudden they can have commerce. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's going to be amazing. And, and access to broadband is still an issue here in the U S we have many underserved communities or neglected communities and now, you know, for someone growing up, you absolutely have to know your way around the Internet to under to be familiar with the technology. If you are going to further your education, if you're going to go into any professional capacity. So it's, you know, again, that is one of those equalizers that that is a must. And, you know, yes. the fact that we need it in our country still speaks a lot to that. It'll be interesting to see how, you know, you know, dealing with competition and dealing with some legacy companies, how things are going to have to change in order to accommodate some of this. Well, and some of that technology for data processing and communication is will be developed so that we have the communication to the moon and to Mars. I mean, right now it takes like 40 minutes to get a message to and from Mars. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's a long way away. So all that technology will be faster, will be Mm -hmm. better, will be stronger and it'll come down here. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Well, just by way of example, you mentioned the pharmaceutical companies having their own space station. Now what's a, what's a pharmaceutical company going to do with a space station? Well, the particular medicines, when they mix, gravity changes that, gravity just like you were again. talking about yeah. with the steel. It, it, gravity makes the sediments and the combinations work differently. So having manufacturing of some of these medicines up in space, you will get cleaner proteins. You know, there's a cellular structure or a crystal structure that is cleaner and bigger. They're able to, they're able to see disease easier with these structures too when they actually look at it 
Parkinson's, osteoporosis, all those come are, are being researched in space because there's a lot of bone loss with astronauts. Right. So that particular thing, there's autoimmune issues. There is immune issues with astronauts. You know, there's things that happen in space with these cells that make it to where you can see it better hmm. and you're able to attack it better and you're able to make better medicines to, in order to, to work with it. So there's Parkinson's, a lot of Parkinson's study up there right now that they're, they're doing some fabulous development to treat Parkinson's. Wow. So oh. once these, these pharmaceuticals really grab a hold of the idea that they need their own space station to do some of this research, then you're going to have Merrick and you're going to have Pfizer. You're going to have all those companies doing their own. Mm. And what's that going to do? Well, all of a sudden you have all these space stations that need service. Mm. A lot of that service can be done down here, which the spaceport could provide. Right. And then you have a lot of services that need to be done up there. You, the Blue Origin is developing an orbital reef. And then then there's solar. And solar <laughs> is, is actually changing too. It's becoming better. And solar it has been developed mm -hmm. because of satellites and, and whatnot. And we're able to take that technology back down wow. here. So, okay. So, wow. I, I mean, yes. it, this is blowing my mind, the, the opportunities and the amazing things. So let me ask this. What are some of the obstacles to space, space? <laughs> besides, you know, you could die quickly and, <laughs> quickly and gravity and, and specifically <laughs> uh, gravity yeah well to some of the to, to companies i mean i mean there's no licensing is there that's going on or you know traffic oh. or you know what are some of the things that uh, is you know that have to be dealt with in in order to really commercialize this and 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 also i'll, I'll wait on that next question I, I will well, overload logistics, you. <laughs> yeah, list, logistics is actually a very major concern. And then there's the whole ethics. And, you know, we just signed the Artemis Accords back uh, during COVID. Mm. I, I got to see it via Zoom. It mm -hmm. was amazing. I was didn't even know it was going to be happening. And that was <laughs> amazing that I was like, oh, my gosh, this is a historic moment. Wow. And it, it what are Yeah, it, what says, are the Artemis you know, Accords, if you could explain that? It's, it's a very basic document that says, this is how we're going to act in space. If we see somebody that needs help, this is what we're going to do. Mm. You know, th this is, we're, it's, it's the ethics of this is how we're going to be. And a lot of the countries signed it. There's some that did not because they have other motives. Mm -hmm. And see, you're going to have the dark side of space, just like you had the dark side of of ocean travel. You know, when people started venturing out into ships, it was the brave new world. It was exciting. It was getting to places you'd never been before. But then, you know, piracy happened and there's, there's, there's things that happened there. And then some of the governments, you know, weren't all that great that set, got set up. <laughs> so how is it going to look is a very big question that has started really developing another industry that's related to space and that's that's law mm. there's a whole space law wow. industry that is really blossoming as well because how are we going to do it there's no lines up there mm. you know who owns space and so a lot of it's really taking shape as like the oceans and the meritus type the maritime type of agreements that happened back when we were still thinking the world was flat. <laughs> so Wow, that is amazing. It, that, it is, and there, there's, there's some dangers. You know, what happens, like, for example, space debris mm -hmm. is one of those things that are, are not positive. We have a lot of junk flying up around there, yeah. and yeah. that junk is going 17,500 miles per hour. <laughs> To give you kind of a, an idea, a bullet travels 1,800 miles per hour. So this is like 
nine times faster, eight times faster than a bullet. Mm. That's how fast this stuff is going. So it can do some serious damage to a satellite, to a ship, to, to anything it runs across. And, and cleaning it up has its own problems of catching it. I mean, you're right. catching something going faster <laughs> than a bullet. But then what do you do with it? And who, who owns it? Mm. You know, what if it has technology that was secret technology that we really don't want in the hands of somebody that we consider to be not friendly? Mm. You know, how, how do we deal with that? Wow. And that is a, a huge space law problem. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're trying to, to work out. The people that are working on cleaning up the debris, that's one of the, the things that they're, they're – there's a very big concern. How do they deal with this technology that is super secret? Wow. Wow. It's almost like we're going to have a, a scavenger industry starting up yes. to start catching these things and, and using them or, or recycling, recycling or something. Yeah. That's amazing. But yeah, it, it may be some good money in that industry. <laughs> well, so they're going to take all this debris and they're going to chop it up and mm-hmm. they're going to be able to make it into the material that you 3d print with. Oh, amazing. Absolutely so. amazing. So here's my other question. So my daughter is a photographer. One of the things she absolutely loves doing is night photography with the Milky Way. She goes out to a Joshua Tree Park, and one of her favorite places to do night photography. But one of the things that she and other photographers talk about is the amount of satellites that cross the photos. Um, And I I thought I read somewhere that something's being done about that. I hope so. Yeah. (laughs) No. (laughs) <laughs> because light pollution is also a very big issue yeah. with seeing the night sky. It's not just the satellites. It's also the light pollution down here on planet. And I don't know if you've noticed, but my neighborhood keeps getting brighter and brighter. Yeah. You got, yeah. you have LED, which is great. It doesn't use as much energy, which is great. But his, I can't see the stars. Mm-hmm. You know, they replaced my lights. And I mean, I, I spent the first six months just being mad because <laughs> I couldn't see my planets anymore. And, uh, but so there, there are issues on that side. And now there is eyes in the sky that like, we just had the James Webb mm, yes. fully un- sent their, their first picture back from what they could see. That is huge. The James Webb is huge. We're going to be able to see life on other planets with the James Webb. It is so fine-tuned. It's like the Hubble on steroids. <laughs> you know, to give you kind of an example, when I first heard of the power of this of telescope is that if it was looking down at Earth, it could tell you what your odometer reading was. <laughs> So it is going to be able to see fires and lights and and things that that imply human civilizations that on is, other planets. Yes. It's just so we're able to see more, but yet I'm not really sure what they're going to be doing about the amount of satellites in orbit. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, they have 107 thousand slated for this year. Amazing. So sooner or later, we got to get to a tipping point, or we're going to be oh, we're going to be Wally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things I think it was Elon Musk that they were working on a type of paint to put a non-reflective paint on some of the satellites in order to eliminate some of the that light pollution in the sky. Yes. But yeah, it's she's got a little app on her phone that tells her where the best places to go where there's less light pollution for that night photography and it was interesting when I when she was showing it to me just how few places there are and and I think she told me something like something about like less than 10% of the population on the earth sees the night sky as it was a hundred years ago. I remember growing up and I could see the Milky Way as clean as, as, and as bright, as beautiful as anything. And I don't see it anymore from where I live. Yeah. So yes, that, that's, that's a sad thing. Mm -hmm. But now not only is it uh, affecting our night sky from just viewing it, which, you know, is important, but it's also affecting getting beyond 
our orbit mm. because it is a very challenging thing to organize a launch to where you're not hitting that those satellites in there. It, it's <laughs> like there's a very small window, and if they can, don't meet that window, the flight is scrubbed. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, it's like down to like 10 minutes. Mm. So that is a concern. Sooner or later, they're going to have to have, like, just like where we live, it's going to be designated property. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be so many and so, it, it, but you do have depth. You do have a lot of space. I mean, space is big. <laughs> so it, we, we do have a little bit, but it is something that is being discussed. Wow. Quite, quite, quite a bit and getting the debris out. So let me ask you this. We're, we're kind of, I, I can't believe it, it. We've been talking this long already. Let me ask you this. What is, what's maybe a day in the life or a week in the life of a space marketer? What do you do? <laughs> well, there's two sides to it. There's one where I'm teaching the companies that are n- not used to marketing. What is marketing? And oh, yeah. I'm also, yeah. you know, the, trying to give the best of marketing. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm teaching principles that are not sleazy, that are not sure that don't shear their customers. They're, they're develop relationships with their customers yeah. because I don't care if it's internet or if it's a hundred years ago and it's newspaper, developing relationships with your customers is what succeeds period. Mm. The tools that we do it with, it changes. And let me tell you, it is hard sometimes to keep up with those changes. But it's still that connection to your customer. And it's giving the, your customer value that makes it to where it's a relationship. And when you try to just take it from them, you'll never win. I don't care how great your marketing tactics are. If they fleece your customers sooner or later, they will go away. Yeah. They don't have to stay with you anymore. So it's basically teaching them how to market healthily. Mm -hmm. And that's important. But then on the other side of it, there's all kinds of opportunities that space presents. Like, for example, in the International Space Station, there's Adidas, there's Estee Lauder. They're doing things up there. And (laughs) I'm sorry, what's Adidas doing in the ISS? (laughs) I think they're doing something with plastics. Wow. That is doing it, it. They're bringing it back down. There's something they're doing that's positive to the environment. I'm, I'm not exactly sure of what they're doing, but I know they're up there. Wow. And Estee Lauder's doing something up there. And Target, I believe Target is up there. So the brands so, are already up there doing things and developing more products or, or that, that's just, that's blowing my mind. That's <laughs> So, you know, and for example, one of my favorite marketing particular ploys that I saw was with Elon Musk. It Mm -hmm. was when the Falcon 9 launched up into space. They had to do a test and they opened up to release their cargo. And instead of that, all they had to do was a concrete block. That's all they had to do. But Elon Musk does not do what you think he's going to do. And he launched a Tesla. I remember that. Yes. With yes. a spaceman. And this Tesla is <laughs> full of Easter eggs that really connect with the average person. Inside the glove compartment is a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh. It's blaring David Bowie. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's full of marketing, but it also is full of story. Yeah. It's full of connection. It's full of relationship. And you can still see where he is. He's he's orbiting Mars. <laughs> so you can there's a, a website that you can go to and see where he is. It's, his name is Sp- Starman, by the way. Starman. And so that's it all it all it had to do was be a concrete block. Yeah. But yet he created a story that is still going. Amazing. Amazing. So, wow. And it's just developing those relationships, telling those stories. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're, so you're teaching scientists, you're teaching these companies how to market more effectively. What's the other half of what you're doing? Telling people that space is something that is connected to them, mm-hmm. that it's every breath we take. 
literally, because it's from space that we're going to heal the planet. Fantastic. That is so exciting. And it's, it's, it's invigorating. Uh, Izzy, I, I, this is so like, every time I have talked with you, I come away just more excited. I feel more positive. Y you just are so infectious with your excitement about space and what's happening. And, and, uh, you know, I think the rest of the night now, that's what I'm going to be <laughs> talking about is like, this was just such the greatest conversation. I, I so appreciate your time and, and coming on and just sharing a little bit about what's happening and, and what you're doing in, and all the puns are just all over the place and what you're doing in this space. And, and this. that's the marketing part of us too. I know. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, we Izzy, come up with those stories. Absolutely. Well, Izzy, thank you so much for your time. This is, I feel like we just scratched the surface of, you know, what's going on. And so I, I would love to ask you back to do a follow up on this. I, I'm, I'm, I confess you sent me your book. I have not read it yet, but I am going on a long trip. <laughs> and so I'm going to read it. I have I, Audible. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I have Audible. I will probably. Send you one. I, I like it on I like it on the pad. I, I like it if I'm traveling. I've got to have it digitally, but otherwise I like the regular book. But I'm going to get into that, and we're going to have a follow-up because I think as I get more into your book, I'm going to have a lot more questions. Sounds good. All right. And it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much, Izzy. By the way, where can people find you? If they have questions or would like to contact you, how can they find you? My website is izzy.house. And you know, there's dot coms, there's dot biz. Well, there's also dot house nice. and my last name just happens to be house. So <laughs> easy dot house, I Z Z Y. And there's, you can catch me there and there's links to my podcast, which is space marketing podcast.com. And I'm, yeah. So LinkedIn is my absolute favorite social media and I am on LinkedIn as well. Fantastic. Ah. Uh. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Izzy. This has been such an enjoyable conversation, and I'm looking forward to the next one already. Me too. Thank you. All right. And thank you, dear listener, for tuning in to another edition of the Endless Coffee Cup podcast. I hope you had a great time with this and listening to what's happening in space. So until next time, thank you so much for tuning in to the Endless Coffee Cup podcast. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.